Hey, what's up there, YouTubers? Edgeman Simjob coming to you guys today with another deck tech update. So today we're taking a look at a standard deck again, and it is Esper Control. So this is actually just going to be a update from the last build that I showed you guys. So as you guys may know, time and time again, I choose to play Esper Control just because it has the best options of cards that you could possibly run. This deck does really good against the meta as it is now, and it's been doing really well. Uh, a buddy of mine actually took a variation of this deck to the Grand Prix in Salt Lake, actually went 9-0 and won the first day, and went to the Top 8 qualifier. He actually didn't place Top 8, but still did really well with the deck. So, uh, some stuff was changed after that, and I've still been playing it in Standard, and it does really well every single week. So, uh, we're going to break this deck down into a couple of different sections, but before we do that... Uh, if you guys have any suggestions of decks that you would like to see, please leave them in the comments below, and I'll take it into consideration uh, for making other decks, especially post Avacyn Restored and stuff like that. So, first off, for the deck, we're going to take a look at the land base. So, we have Seachrome Coast here, so it's going to be a playset, and these are the only Scars lands that I have in here. Uh, I didn't want to rely too much on the Scars lands. There's not a huge amount of stuff going on early game. Uh, really turn two, turn three. Uh, once you have your two lands down there, it doesn't really matter a huge bit with what else is going on. Uh, next we have Isolated Chapel, so this is going to be a playset. So giving us white and black. Uh, next we have Drowned Catacomb, so two of them. Glacial Fortress, two, so two and two. Evolving Wilds, we have three. And I really like running Evolving Wilds, especially in control decks, because it lets you get a lot of your lands filtered out of your deck. That way you can actually draw into cards that you actually need. Uh, we have four planes, some really nice Zendikar ones. Uh, three islands. And three swamps. So let's go over the land base again. So we have four Sea Chrome Coast. Four Isolated Chapel, two Drowned Catacomb, two Glacial Fortress, three Island, um, four Plains, three Swamps, and the uh, three Evolving Wilds that I forgot to mention. But uh, pretty straightforward land base, not much to explain about it. Uh, it's really relying a lot on black and white and just a little bit of splash of blue here, here and there. But uh, for the most part, it is very balanced in the way that you're able to get the mana that you need. Alright, so now we're going to take a look at um, a combination of stuff. We're going to be taking a look at the Planeswalkers, Creatures, and Artifacts because the actual grouping of these isn't that huge. So we have two Soren, Lord of Innistrad. This guy is really good for creating tokens. Um, also, with all the token creation that's going on in the deck, you can also create some emblems, but it's not always the game plan. Um, usually it's to get him up to his, his 6 and then crack the 6 and be able to take some stuff. Uh, I've had it happen a couple of times and it's really convenient to have a resource like that. But nonetheless, Soren is just a really good uh, token producer and having some lifelink creatures isn't always that bad. Uh, next we have Gideon Jura, so three Gideons, and Gideon is just really good against aggro, most of the aggro matchups, since the meta is a little bit more inclined to having aggro decks. Um, basically, he has removal on him with his minus two, his plus two makes attacks redirected to him, and if you're playing against a control deck and they're tapped out and you know they that they don't have a removal for him, uh, you can turn him into a 6-6 six, six and swing in, so... Uh, he also becomes a win condition in certain situations. Uh, one Elspeth Terrell. So she is going to be gaining some life for us. That's what I use her most for. Um, also, she creates 1-1s one for blocking ground creatures. And her minus 5 destroys all other permanents. So um, I basically use it as a wrath type effect more times than none, but also gaining back life with, again, like I said, the amount of tokens that you can create with this deck is always convenient, and it can keep you in um, in matchups such as zombies where they're going to be doing shenanigans with the messenger, and uh, it's annoying sometimes. 
Uh, next we have Snapcaster Mage, so only two of them. Uh, I decided to cut it down to two. Running four or even three of them is just being greedy. You really don't need them that often in the deck. Um, but whenever you do get them, it's always a nice tool to be able to flash back something. Uh, next and finally, we have Batter Skulls. So two Batter Skulls. And I actually decided to run this over Worm Coil Engine just because with the amount of Phantasmal Images and stuff that's running around, um, I really don't like the idea of people being able to copy up my Worm Coil Engine, so I decided to change it to Batter Skull. Um, also, being able to bounce it back for 3 is really convenient against any type of destruction against artifact uh, spells, so it becomes really convenient to have the bounce back cost for it. And, uh, it, it lets you replay it even if the creature gets destroyed and you can't create other tokens. So that's another thing that becomes really handy with this card. So for this section, we have two Soren Lord of Innistrad, three Gideon Juro, one Elspeth, two Snapcaster, and two Batterskull. So Planeswalkers, the creatures, and artifacts. And the last section that we have here are the instant sorceries and enchantments. So first off, we have Lingering Souls, which is becoming one of the best cards in the meta now. Um, being able to create two Flying 1-1s one and then having a flashback that is um, less costly than the actual converted mana cost for casting it originally is really convenient. Um, that's why we're running black. There aren't a huge amount of black cards in this deck, but uh, definitely getting black mana to flashback Lingering Souls is really awesome. So, a play set of Lingering Souls. Uh, next we have Timely Reinforcements, and this is something that a lot of decks play sideboard. Um, I actually run two of them main board and uh, one of them sideboard, sometimes two depending on how I know the meta is going to be uh, that given week. But, it comes in really handy against decks like Zombies, also Red Deck Wins, which occasionally comes around here and there. Um, any decks that are really quick on aggro, timely reinforcements can help you out, especially if they get a lot of board presence. You can gain life, get some tokens on there, and the tokens have interactions with stuff like Elspeth, um, also Soren if you want to make them even bulkier and have them swing in. Uh, there's a lot of different stuff that you can do with them, and it becomes a pretty good synergy. So, only two timely reinforcements. Next we have Mana Leak, so a playset, pretty straightforward, you can just counter stuff. Um, Probably going to get cut down to three after Avicen Restored because of uh, the Cavern of Souls. Uh, next we have Think Twice. So three Think Twice is here. Uh, being able to draw a card and then flash back as well. Uh, having four of them really isn't necessary. Again, it's being a little bit greedy. Um, but three of them is perfectly fine. You can draw some cards early game or even late game to find the threats that you need for the deck. Uh, we have Forbidden Alchemy, so only two of these. You really don't want to be digging too much with your deck because you don't want to get any valuable stuff into the grave and have to pick between one awesome card or an even as equally awesome card like um, a Gideon or an Elspeth if you happen to draw or, well, reveal both of them in the four that you have. But uh, it, it's it's still really good. It lets you dig a little bit and it lets you get answers that you need. Even the flashback on, it's really nice late game. Uh, Curse of Death's Hold, so this is only a one of, And this is going towards uh, the Esper Tokens type decks or Esper Spirits. And also Delver, because whenever it hits a table and it resolves, it's going to be pretty annoying for Delver because for the most part, the only thing that they're going to be able to play is uh, Geist of St. Traft if they choose to run it. I mean, there's some variations on... Delver, but Curse of Death's Hole really restricts decks like those that um, have certain creatures with a power and toughness of 1-1. One, one. So uh, it, be it becomes pretty convenient. Against stuff like humans, this would side out because they have, um, they have Honor of the Pure, so this would pretty much be no good. But uh, against certain matchups, this is just very awesome. Next we have Tragic Slip. So this is going to be a 3 of. With the amount of tokens that we're creating, it's really easy to just throw one of your tokens as a blocker at something and uh, then be able to tragic slip a bigger creature or that same creature if it's 
uh, something of an annoyance. So you can pretty much set up the more bid with the tokens that you create. Uh, Day of Judgment. This is a playset, so you really want removal you want to be able to wipe the board especially with cards like Thrun the Last Troll uh, especially if your opponent ha doesn't have the mana to regenerate him it becomes really awesome to be able to get rid of the board also guys the same draft because you can't target him and uh, annoying cards like that you just don't want your opponent to have board presence and Day of Judgment is always key so play set and I'm being a little bit greedy with it but then again my meta is kinda specific to a lot of aggro type decks and the last card that we have here is Oblivion Ring. So two of these, being able to get rid of uh, Planeswalkers, other creatures that are annoying, Worm Coil Engine, you don't want it to hit the graveyard, stuff like that. So again, another pretty straightforward card. Three mana to basically get rid of something. So, alright, the cards that we have here are Four Lingering Souls, uh, Four Mana Leaks, a Curse of Death's Hold, Three Tragic Slip, Two Oblivion Ring, Play set of Day of Judgment, two Forbidden Alchemy, three Think Twice, and two Timely Reinforcements for all of the other spells of the deck. So that about wraps up the deck tech here and all the cards that I'm choosing to run in this deck. Like I said, the deck's been doing really well. And if you guys want a more in-depth kind of explanation to it, there's going to be a link down below to one of my articles that's actually a premium article on Cardshark.com explaining this deck talking about sideboard stuff and basically how to do well with the deck so uh, if you guys are looking for a better explanation you can just check out that link and read through it but yeah that about does it for this deck tech so hopefully you guys enjoyed it remember to like favorite and subscribe and i'll be bringing you guys more magic the gathering content daily so thank you guys for watching and as always have a wonderful fun-filled magic the gathering day